How much is a throttle body upgrade worth on a stock motor, on a modified motor, or on a supercharged motor? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today, this is our first episode of What's It Worth? And we're going to start off with throttle bodies. So the question is, how much power is a throttle body upgrade really worth? Well, it depends. Are we talking about a stock motor? a modified motor, maybe a supercharged motor, because the throttle body upgrade can be worth power. Let's check it out. Hey guys, before we get to the results on the LS, I want you to check out richerholderperformance.com. If you're looking for performance parts for your LS, we got cams, we got springs, we got lifters, we got kits, Black Friday sale, 10% off, so check it out. Okay guys, let's jump right in on our tests on the effect of throttle body size for our LS combinations. And we're gonna start off with testing a throttle body upgrade on a stock motor. And this basically is our starting point. One thing we know about throttle bodies is you need more throttle body airflow to support more power output. The question is, when does that thing become a restriction? And we'll see with our other tests is as we go up in power, throttle body flow becomes more important. But the questions a lot of guys ask is, hey, what happens if I do a throttle body upgrade on my stock motor? And the answer is you shouldn't be doing that because there really is no power to be had because not because a throttle body, like a bigger throttle body or a better, better throttle body, which we tested both of those here, not because they don't flow more air, they do. If we go from a stock throttle body up to this AccuFab throttle body that we tested or to a 92 millimeter with an adapter, which we also tested, you see that both of those th throttle bodies flow more air than the stock throttle body does. So they could support more power. That really isn't the problem though, because the restriction in the power output is not in the throttle body. It's in the rest of the motor. The opening in the stock truck intake manifold is only so big. So even when we put a giant throttle body in front of it, it just doesn't flow anymore because everything else is restricting the airflow. The motor doesn't make any power. It just doesn't need a bigger throttle body. But on our test, we ran a 4.8 liter. It was an LR4. The motor was basically all stock, stock cam, stock heads, stock truck intake manifold. We ran it first with a stock throttle body. We did the, run this thing with long tube headers. We ran a Mazir electric water pump the way that we always do. And we did an optimized tune with a Holly HP management system. And all of that was basically pretty standard. This is what we do when we do a baseline on the test before we add cams or heads, or in this case, we added a, a different, a couple of different throttle bodies to start out with. So we ran this motor in basically stock trim the way that we got it from the wrecking yard with long tube headers and an optimized tune. Made 333 horsepower and 338 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what happened when we added a larger throttle body. In this case, we, we started off, we added two different throttle bodies in this test. One was an AccuFab throttle body, and AccuFab was a billet throttle body that uh, Mahovitz did early on, the guys from AccuFab, and it did flow about 100 CFM more than a factory throttle body. We flow tested both of these on the flow bench at West Tech. And the AccuFab did, the AccuFab throttle body did indeed flow more because of design. It did indeed flow more than the factory throttle body, but it just showed no power gain. We have a variance of one or two horsepower, but basically this is just showing the difference between um, one run or another run. This has nothing to do really with the throttle body. We also tested with using, a, I think it was an ICT billet adapter going from the factory opening up to, uh, it has a taper opening up to a 92 millimeter fast throttle body that we float on there. I'll go ahead and show you the fast throttle body that we use. And when we did that, again, the same thing. It just made the same power. And that's because even though both of these throttle bodies that we tested flow more than the stock one, there just isn't any power in upgrading the throttle body on an otherwise stock motor because the rest of the motor is dictating what the power output is and not the throttle body. So now let's take a look at a couple of tests where we actually did show some power change from a throttle body. Okay, now that we've taken a look at doing a throttle body upgrade on a stock motor on the 4.8 liter, let's see what happened when we did another test. This one actually is not a back-to-back -back test on the throttle body, but more on a radius entry. But it shows another thing, just like we had before, that when you do need additional airflow, something like a throttle body upgrade, in this case it's a radius air horn into the throttle body, will make additional power. And on the 4.8 test, had that motor been equipped and made more power with ported heads the Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris cam, one of my low buck truck cams, or had there been more performance, had that been a built-up motor like, you know, a heads cam and intake 4.8, 
or a stroker version of that, and then we did a throttle body test, we did the same kind of throttle body test, we would have saw you know, a change in power. So this kind of gives you an idea of this test. This test was a stroker motor. It was a 383 stroker. It had very good ported heads on it. The guys from Total Engine Airflow had ported up a set of uh, 243 LS6 heads. They'd done their CNC porting, and these things flowed 330 CFM. We had a fast LSXR intake manifold on it, 102 millimeter throttle body. This one even had 172 comp aluminum roller rockers on it. We had inch and 7 eighths headers, 42 pound injectors. We were running with a, this was a MEFI standalone management system. And this thing had flat top pistons on it. So it had a little bit of compression. So really it was, it turned out to be a fairly healthy combination. This thing made up close to, uh, you know, right at 600 horsepower. In fact, the peak was 599.4 horsepower. So just a skosh <laughs> under the 600 horsepower and 542 foot-pounds. So this little 383 did very, very well. And one of the things that we did, we had the, the fast 102 millimeter throttle body on there, but what we did was we took a radius entry and attached it to the throttle body to see if we could get a little bit more airflow even into that 102, because we didn't have a bigger throttle body to test on it. Had we gone backwards and put a <laughs> a stock throttle body on there, a 78 millimeter, if that would indeed fit, and not leak everywhere. I mean, once the throttle is open all the way, that wouldn't be a problem. But if we put a 78 millimeter throttle body on there, we would expect to see some pretty big drops in power. And we could have also tested maybe a 92 and we could have saw a slight drop in power at this power level. But what we did was put the radius entry on here. And here's what happened when we put the radius entry on there. We got a little bit of power and this is kind of what we see when we're improving the airflow of the combination and we got up into the power range where this thing needed a little bit of additional airflow and the radius entry definitely improved the airflow of this combination and we picked up a couple horsepower we were up at like 603 horsepower peak torque actually didn't change because the power output only changed from about 53 or 5400 on up thanks to the radius entry but again this gives you an idea of what happens when you improve the airflow and you will see gains in power as long as that throttle body actually is the restriction. Let's take a look at a direct comparison between a stock throttle body and a 102 millimeter fast throttle body. And this was done on a supercharged application. And as we'll see, the supercharged application definitely needs big throttle bodies. It definitely will respond to a bigger throttle body because more flow into the blower results in more boost and more power out of the blower. And this is exactly what happened. We had our 5.3 liter, our L33, the Junkyard Aluminum 5.3. It had stock 799 heads on it. We did have a Brian Tooley Racing Truck Norris camshaft in it. We had a spring upgrade on the heads for the camshaft. We had inch and seven eighths long tube headers. We had our Holly HP management system. This one was topped off with a Demuse engineering adapter setup. This one had the lower manifold. It was a Magnuson. He's also done some with the uh, Holly low ram and the Holly high ram stuff. We, I've got a bunch of videos up on that. You can take a look at it. But we we equipped this first with the stock throttle body. And the blower that we were using on this was actually a Ford racing blower for a Coyote application. But this adapter kit that Tom Demuse did is designed to accept either that blower or any of the Ford GT500 blowers, um, the 122s, or and, and so you could put those blowers, which guys have taken off and upgraded when they've done Whipples and Kenny Bells and that kind of thing. So those blowers were out there, the, the 122s. But the kit allowed us to put that blower on there and allowed me to do, you could see how we did the throttle body test on this thing. So we ran it first with the stock blow or with the stock throttle body and our supercharged combination produced 657 horsepower and peak torque was up near 670 foot pounds of torque. And here's what happened when we did our throttle body upgrade. We replaced the stock throttle body with 102 millimeter fast, the big mouth throttle body. You could see we picked up power everywhere, picked, even picked up power down low but it picked up more power on the top because we had an increase in boost, the corresponding increase in boost. As I said, when you have more airflow going into the blower, you have more boost and power coming out of the blower. And that's exactly what happened. I'll, I'll go ahead and put the change in boost pressure up here. You could see what the change was, but the throttle body upgrade in this case added more boost from the blower, which is exactly what we wanted all without changing the blower pulley. So the peak power jumped up to 702 horsepower. So big change from a throttle body upgrade. 
peak torque was, uh, let's pick a spot up here, like 690 foot-pounds of torque. So again, on these applications where you have more power output, you'd see similar kinds of gains or you would see some gains from a six or 700 horsepower application where we ran a comparison between a stock throttle body and this bigger throttle body where the motor had enough airflow that it needed more airflow from the bigger throttle body where a small throttle body would be a restriction, you see big gains. And that's exactly what we saw on this. And by the way, if you did this kind of test on a blow through application, either a turbo blowing through the throttle body or a centrifugal blower blowing through the throttle body, you don't get big gains because you've pressurized the throttle body and you've made the throttle body, even the smaller one, flow a lot more than it normally does. So you get big gains on a positive displacement blower, big gains on a motor that's big and need lots of airflow, but not big gains on a stock or mild combination or not big gains on a blow through application. Armature holder, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.